the highway you can see it, check out this shovel nose. How cool does he look? I'm gonna have to... Okay. Fraser Coast flathead, taken right up in the shallows here. Okay, g'day everybody. Luke here, thanks for watching. Today I'm on the flats of Fraser Island, uh, chasing flathead. I've got the atomic prong lure on, okay? Three inch uh, prawn imitation lure. I've got it mounted on the Atomic Arrows S tree, three to 10 pound, uh, with a bit of braid and leader. And I'm not sure how well you can see it, but you can see the tide is coming out at the moment, all right? Um, and it's flowing sort of this way. So it's coming off of these sandbanks and quite a lot of whiting and brim and smaller other species are up right up in the shallows. Um, chasing yabbies and things like that. And all I'm doing is just basically cruising around with the Minn Kota. Um, I'm in about 50 centimetres of water and I'm just cruising in between these sand beds, sand banks, sorry, and I'm just peppering all along them with a soft plastic. What I find is as the tide starts to move a bit, uh, you get a lot of flathead and things sitting off just in the slightly deeper water waiting for that bait, uh, smaller whiting, even yabbies themselves uh, to just sort of move off those sandbanks and they ambush them and I'm trying to ambush them <laughs> or, tr or trick them. So I'm using a prawn imitation lure, the three inch atomic prong. Um, I like uh, three inch curl tail grubs, really, really good. And I also love using uh, prawn imitations, especially after we've had a bit of uh, rain and there's a bit of fresh water pumping through the system, because that seems to get the jelly prawns really fired up and breeding. Um, so I figure that's what a lot of other species are, are eating, especially grunter and things. So I try and imitate their bait source. Curtail grub works really well. Oh, just had a tap then. So pause, see if he comes back. Yep, he's only little. So just anchor lock us. I think I'm in pretty shallow. He's not very big. And that was right up, right up on that, uh, edge of that exposed sandbank. So this is a little tiny fella. I'm just gonna, before I beach myself, cause the tide's going out. I'm just gonna tell it to go that way a bit. Oh, he's off. He was pretty tiny. He was only about that big. <laughs> um, good thing about the Altera is you can trim. Auto trim. Nice. So I can get up in nice shallow sort of water uh, and trim it when I need to. I've got to be a little bit careful because I have come unstuck occasionally. Um, I used to have a 440 Quintrex Renegade and I used to know with that that I could go right up into the shallows and if I got stuck I could just hop out and the boat was that light it would lift up and then I could uh, walk it out. What I've learnt since having a fiberglass boat, the Fusion 19, is that is impossible. <laughs> this thing weighs a lot more than, than the old tinny did. So I've got to be a little bit more careful. Thankfully though, the Fusion 19 floats in 30 centimetres worth of, 30 centimetres of water. Um, so I can still get up really, really shallow, especially because I can auto trim that motor makes it really easy to get up here. I just have to be a little bit careful. Have been stuck once or twice, but don't tell anybody. Some could say that I did it deliberately. I'll stick, I'll, I'll go with that plan actually. I did it deliberately because that sounds a hell of a lot better. So that was a real small little bar tail. I really want a nice sort of mid 40s, low 50s fish for dinner. And I'll just keep throwing the atomic prong. 
and see what I can pull out. Okay, that's unfortunate. I don't know how that's happened. I'm gonna have to untangle that. I'm not exactly sure how you've done this. You've managed to go straight through the net. A little prawn. Okay, little prawn imitation. So here you go, folks. Another beautiful Fraser Coast flathead taken right up in the shallows here along the western side of Fraser Island. This one will be coming home for dinner. Absolutely beautiful, and I love chasing this species. And how we can see it, check out this shovel nose. How cool does he look? Right up on the shallows or oh, tap. Very cool. Okay, folks, so, so what I'm going to do now, folks, is walk you through the two retrieves I use with the atomic prong. A good prawn imitation lure, lots of little wiggly bits on it and stuff like that. And that's the key to getting the strike from the fish, I think, uh, to make it look lifelike. I like bright colors, some people like dark colors. Uh, but all these little bits and pieces of it create vibration and when it's sitting on the bottom and it's waving around it just attracts gets a fish's attention uh, nice light outfit i use a uh, 1000 size reel um, and about five pound braid up on the uh, shallow flats and there's nothing complicated about this at all all i do is cast it right up into the shallows so up there it's about 20 centimeters at most um, I use about a quarter ounce jig head just purely to assist with distance casting. It's got nothing to do with the sink rate because in 20 centimeters of water, it's on the bottom in no time. Okay, so you know it's on the bottom when you can actually see in your line, it goes completely slack. Sometimes when it hits the water, there'll be a little bit of a bow there and you sort of wait a little, a little bit if you're in deeper water that is. And then you'll see that just completely bow out. That's when you know you're on the bottom. I wind up a tiny little bit of slack and then I just go hop wind up slack, hop, wind up slack, hop, wind up slack, and then I'll let it sit there for a few seconds, hop, hop, wind up slack, hop, wind up slack, let it sit there, hop, 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 and just mix it up like that, okay? Um, not exactly a single hop, there's a few in there, I guess, uh, but you get the general idea, and what you'll notice is the lure does pretty much what the rod tip does, okay? So as long as you've got a little, like you don't have massive amount of slack, as long as you've got a little bit of tension connected to your lure, so I can feel there's a bit of tension just there, and when I go bang, I can see that lure rise right up out of the water, okay? And what that does is it gets the lure, lure sitting on the bottom, and it gets the lure to come up, and then it'll just float back down, okay? Letting all those wiggly bits on that lure do its thing. So that's a fairly basic, that's probably the one, one retrieve if you're starting out with soft plastic fishing. It's probably the one retrieve you really wanna get comfortable with. 
uh, in various depths of water. Okay, the second one, a little bit more complicated. When cast it out, right up in the shallows. Now I'm gonna get on the cast deck to show you this because I need to get the rod angle, okay? So again, I wind in the slack and I keep my rod tip low. And I'm basically pulling it towards myself like that, okay? And what that's doing is that's the jig head's on the bottom and it's forcing the jig head to stay low and it's making it grind its way through the sand and the muck, all right? So I'll sort of, I'll, same thing again, I'll do two or three, one, two or three, and then every now and again, I'll just go hop to let it come up. And the reason I do that is a lot of the time the fish will see the disturbance in the sand and everything and that sort of uh, piques their attention. You, you talk to spear fishers with what they do when they go down. A lot of spear fishers will dive down, they'll get to the bottom and then they'll cause a bit of a disturbance with the sand and stuff to get the fish to come to them so then they can shoot the fish. Well the same same theory really with, with this lure is this retrieve, this rush rush retrieve is I'm, I'm trying to create a disturbance in the mud and the sand so all the fish sort of go hey what's going on over there and they start coming over and looking and then that little hop every now and again is enough for them to go hey look at that we'll have a piece of that and they'll go for a bite uh, and you're taking advantage of all the wiggly bits on the lure so I'll, I'll do it again cast it out as far as I like to have distance on the flats you know there's different theories about being stealth and stuff keep the rod tip really low don't be afraid to put your rod tip in the water if you have to all right and i just go boom boom you can hear i got the drag set really light boom 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 and then hop boom 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 and then hop sometimes you speed it up other times you do it really slow And you can actually see the lure cruising along the bottom. And I think with the prawn imitation lures, being a little bit aggressive now and again, like a little bang, 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 is kind of imitating a prawn when they're flicking across the surface and through the water, all right? So they're two retrieves I really recommend you have a go with. Where's my son gone? Have a go when you're using the Atomic Prawn, a great prawn imitation lure. Uh, Really not much else to say about it, apart from they catch fish. So uh, you've seen what we're having for dinner. And that's a result of that lure and those retrieves. Okay, so a little tiny flathead, okay, uh, but that, that atomic prong, he was all over that, all over it, really, really hungry. So I'll keep peppering that area to see if I can find a slightly bigger one. He'd be high 30s, crouching up to 40, I'd say. Uh, very, very healthy. Um, these fish grips, absolutely must when you're handling flathead, I reckon, especially if you've got kids. They've got some very, very sharp bits and pieces on them, some good weaponry. And these little guys, even though they're great fun for the kids to catch, uh, they can do some really bad damage to the kids. So when they, when they cut them, they bleed like crazy. So uh, use the lip grippers, um, try and use a, a wet cloth.
and uh, teach the kids how to do it nice and safely. All right, we'll put him back so he can torment another angler. Away he goes.